What's going on, everybody? So today I want to dive into the Hell Arena shop and briefly touch on the collection slash trophy, which I will be going in depth more so in a future video. So I want to talk about all of them that I know of, and I haven't seen a complete list of them yet. So I wanted to just see where I can find all of them in the game, do a little bit more research, and then give you my full thoughts on them and kind of rank some of the ones that you're going to be looking for. But as for the shop today, this is pretty important because we are going to be getting a ton of these tickets early, early, early in the game as Hell Arena releases because most people are going to be low ranks, meaning that you're going to get a big surplus just by winning the battles. First off, though, the Blood Soak name tags. These are basically off limits because you basically need like top eight slash number one rank um, in terms of like ranking in the game. So like if you're not like master tier, for example, in Arena, this doesn't really apply to you uh, for the most part because you're just not going to be able to be up there. So most of these things are just not available to 99% of the player base. So I'm going to pretty much ignore them for the most part. I will touch on them real quickly here. The collection keys are actually really nice, um, as well as the unique trophies. I would definitely prioritize these first and then go into either the recruit recruitment cards or mythic runes. Actually, both these are kind of similar value to me because the mythic runes can actually help you prioritize specific characters, whereas the astral cards obviously help you build towards that SP character. But I'll talk more about the trophies and why they're good when we dive into this shop. Now, for this one, we have a few basic commodities here. We have the staminas. We have the 24-hour boosts for resources, soul potions, hourglasses, the skins, the trophies, and collection upgrades, and then summon cards and helentis. First off, I want to touch on the cosmetics and the outfits. These technically have boosts for your character. Generally speaking, though, they are much worse boosts than either getting better gear, upgrades to your level, trophies. So these are just for fun. If you want to get them, get them. They are just for fun, okay? But as for the actual investment here, I think Helentis is going to be the best option. Similar to why, you know, Rez is the best option there. It's a triple S character. She's going to be useful, particularly for Hell Arena to generate you more tickets, which is also part of the reason why I think she's going to be the best option to go for initially. Because you can see here with the um, passive here in Hell Arena, it received 15% increased round settlement rewards after winning three offensive challenges with Helentis deployed. So if you win three challenges, if you look here and we go over to the Hell Arena here, okay, the round settlement rewards are actually a bit of tickets. Um, you can see here, I say tickets, but they're name tags, but I'll probably continue to call them tickets on accident. The name tags here, if you're going into an intermediate or advanced fighter, 15% additional round settlement rewards is going to give you roughly around like three or in this case it's going to give you an additional 6k at the end of each week that is a big chunk okay that is a big chunk of additional resources if you just use helentis in your challenges okay so definitely recommend going for helentis and i'm actually not 100 sure if you can use gene hybrids on her i believe you can because she's a triple s the sp character you cannot which is terrible okay i might rant about that in another video but I believe you can for Helentis. If you cannot, then, well, you're forced to continue to invest in Helentis. But if you can use gene hybrids, I, contrary to Rez, would actually recommend you potentially go and invest into her in order for you to secure those additional round settlement rewards. A, because, again, you're going to get extra currency, but B, because there's actually a lot of other options here that I would not mind investing into. And if you compare it to, like, the Galactic Arena shop, the next best thing for compared to res is limited recruitment cards. And yeah, I do buy those oftentimes within the resets. Um, in fact, I'm going to buy some right now. <laughs> but after that, there's no one else in here that I want. Whereas in the Hell Arena, we actually have some good options. Speaking of the next good options, the trophies slash collection. I actually like the collection slot keys because as far as I know, there's not really a lot of these in the game. And you're going to max out your small trophy slots very quickly because they're very easy to acquire. So actually getting the slot keys, if you have zero open slots in your collection, like I do, you're going to want to consider upgrading the collection slot. Keep in mind also, which I'll talk about a little bit later, in the collection, there's a little bit of a strategy to using those. As for the trophies themselves, well, I would prioritize the large ones over the small ones. And the main reason for this, which is what I was going to talk about in the collection key, is you actually don't get a lot of large trophies early on when you unlock this. So 
when you upgrade them or you put a trophy in, you're getting pure value, right? Whereas here, if I get in a small trophy, yeah, I can get a little bit bonus, but they're typically just upgrades to my current ones that I have already. For example, here, um, this one is all heroes gain 2% HP. And I believe in the shop here, this one is an all heroes gain 4% HP. So it's, it's twice as good, which is a good upgrade, but not quite as good as upgrading from nothing to a massive one, right? So for this one, for example, basically gives you an extra stamina of the Sensaro Marsh every day. This is going to stack up in the long run, okay? And you want to get this as soon as possible. But also the small ones are very, very good as well. They're very close. And honestly, I would just prioritize these first. If you have a slot open, they're going to be very, very valuable. Just overall giving you massive stats. I mean, look at this. Energy Summoner Vanguards just get 8% attack and HP. That's huge, especially for someone like Leo, Anpu, Nordeon's going to benefit from this. This is a big one, okay? But then we talk about the Astral Recruitment cards, which I believe the, is the third priority on in this shop. Yeah, you can go for Astral Recruitment cards before the trophies, but I tend to lean towards guaranteed stats, and that's what the trophies are. They're guaranteed stats. You know you're going to get stats from them, and uh, you don't have to rely on RNG. Astral Recruitment cards, unfortunately, the reason why they're important is because it's the only way to obtain the SP characters at this moment. But... The cards themselves are actually not that bad. The, the bad part is the actual SP drop rate, but the cards actually have a similar drop rate to give you full triple S characters as a standard banner, actually more so than that. But also it has the option to drop universal crystal shards, gene hybrid shards, and mythic runes, which is actually much preferable over an elite, right? I'd much prefer getting one of these than an elite character at my stage of the game. And if you're mid to end game, then you probably have a similar experience if you're early game, then yeah, you're probably going to want the elites. But guess what? There's still 28% drop rate for elites, which if you look and compare to like a standard banner here, the elite drop rate is 3.59%, which is very, very low. So you're actually going to get a ton of elites from this. So even early game, it's going to be very, very valuable to just pick up a bunch of random elites that's going to help you progress your overall account. Then we dive into the other things in the shop, which are still good, actually. First off, let's talk about the hourglasses. As I said earlier, I'm not a huge fan of RNG, but this is one of those situations where it kind of removes portions of RNG for you when you're rerolling. And these can actually give you massive bonuses when you do reroll your commanders. So I actually do like picking up the glorious hourglasses. I don't like picking up the premium ones because generally speaking, I do have more than two locked slots. Um, and that's the ones I'm really locking down and rerolling. But if you need premium hourglasses, those work as well. So. I actually do lean towards that, but there's also some other guaranteed upgrade options. But because I don't need to really upgrade my levels too often, I don't lean towards this. But comparing the 24 hour XP and Rubelite to the Crimson Abyss stamina, the 24 hour Soul Rubelite and XP tends to be far better than the actual stamina itself. For example, here you can actually pick up, let's say, a Soul Rubelite and a Hero XP combined for 44 or 42k. Whereas this one costs 20k, so you get two stamina for every essentially 24 hour Rublite and 24 hour Hero XP. If we look at what my Hero XP and Rublite actually are right now, which by the way, you're not going to be this potentially because, well, I am progressed in the campaign decently far. You can see I get 4,560 Soul Rublite, and for the Hero XP, I get 447,000. If we jump into the Crimson Abyss here and we look, you can see here I get 200 or 2,000. 160k hero xp if i use two stamina guess what it's 4580 soul rublite versus 4000 and 447,000 hero xp versus 320,000. so generally speaking going and being picking up those 24 hour bonuses are more useful than picking up the soul uh or than picking up the stamina but you also do get soul potions from there and that is also another thing you can buy from this shop as well and uh well Soul Rublite from the, or uh, Soul Potions from the shop and from the stages, you have to weigh whether or not those are important to you. Usually as you develop later on in the game and you start prioritizing specific characters and you stop building out all these elites, the Soul Potions, you start to accumulate a little bit more of them. And they're a resource that you do want to be careful with always, but you start to want them less because there's like other random stats that you could upgrade with them, but they're not as impactful. And then lastly, we have the gold, the runes, and the two staminas down here. First off, gold, I've never had a problem with. 
I can't. If I'm, I'm picky with my gear, and if you're picky with your gear, you basically never have a problem with gold. Epic runes. These are useful in the early game, but mid to late game, you have a massive surplus of them. I would not pick them up. As for the stamina, I would generally steer away from the stamina supplements unless you are early game because the Disa Cave, Sinsora Marsh, and uh, Terradome are going to be really nice for you to progress your account. But for me, I don't really care about Disa Cave's sets um, as much as some of the other sets in the game. They're still very useful because you still want two-piece sets, but I don't care about them as much as the Katosian Triangle stamina. And so that's what I would prefer in between the two staminas. And this is in order to get those, you know, really chase sets like, you know, the, um, what is the set? Uh, oh my goodness, Marauder sets, uh, right? That's like one of the key sets for a lot of the Assassins and Nordtheon. Getting Surge sets, Burst sets are going to be really, really nice. Madness sets for your summoners. Overall, those sets are maximum priority typically. And generally speaking, because I'm chasing those sets, I actually can't put a two-piece together sometimes. And so that makes Disa Caves even less valuable, in my opinion, later on in the game. But overall, that's my thoughts on the Hell Arena shop. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. I actually think the shop is very, very nice. And the summons even for the Astral uh, cards are very, very nice as well. The problem is that the summon rate for the SP character is bad. So... <laughs> It really has soured all the other things that are good about this update because the Hell Arena shop and Hell Arena, I think, is pretty good. So, you know, don't be too afraid of that and investing into a lot of the things in here. And of course, I will be going over a full collection dive once I get more information about eh, all the different trophies that you can collect. I might have to write them down and kind of rate them. But most of them, honestly, they're not too difficult because either you get like a PvP bonus, like a straight up PvE bonus, which... It's just going to be super good or a class specific bonus. Those are generally the ones that you're going to find in the game. And of course, the class specific bonuses, well, they're good if you want upgrades for that specific class. Um, but I'll go over them more in depth in the future videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all for the next one.